All right, man, you got me fired up. Let's get it going. <laughs> I Crushing our podcast. I am, uh, I am lit today. It is August 22nd, the year 2023. Welcome aboard, everybody. You're listening to the Crushing Iron Podcast, episode 707. 707. Now listen up, everybody, because this will be the last time you hear my voice. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, <laughs> before, before we went live, I was like, this is, I almost went on like a pre-show tangent. I was, I'm on fire today for some reason. I'm, I've had the appropriate amount of coffee. But, you know, it's like, and honestly, I'm probably a little bit irritable because it's so fucking hot right now here that, yeah, I went outside to walk to Waffles this morning, like six o'clock, and we're both just like sweating profusely. I'm like, this is not, where is September? I Uh, want my hoodie, I want my shorts, I want football back on, and I want to be in Madison. Ready for the race is like the kickoff of like fall weather. It's one of my favorite places on the planet, as you all know. But yeah, so I'm a little bit irritable about that, but then- when you have these dead periods of time with races, right? You obviously you've got, you know, you got 70.3 world championships this weekend. You were going to have Ironman Canada, but that was canceled because of the fires in Canada. So you're kind of in this, you're in the freak out space, right? You got all these huge races coming to the pipeline and everyone's kind of stuck in no man's land. They're, they're doing their last training blocks. And so they're like super grumpy. So they're irritable and they're posting ridiculous questions on Facebook page or, they're tapering, so they got way too much time on their hands. So they're posting ridiculous questions on Facebook, or they're asking ridiculous questions, or making bad decisions. So yeah, I'm a little bit fired up. I'm probably fired up with them. Uh, but before we go into that today, it's your first time tuning in. Welcome. We appreciate you giving us your time. We know you have quite a lot of options in the triathlon podcast universe and just podcasts in general. Tons of valuables. We appreciate you tuning in today. We cover it all. We do swim, bike, and run specific podcasts. We do race recaps and also a lot of race previews. But for the most part, Mike and I as coaches, athletes, best friends, we just sit back, relax, have an open, honest discussion about what we're going through in life, not just as human beings, but also as coaches and athletes ourselves. We also talk frequently about what our own ex are going through. Mike and I work with a wide range of athletes all across the globe from beginner level athletes looking for a first 5K or sprint, all the way up through elite level amateurs trying to get back to our championships and everyone in between from all over the globe. And we use the feedback loop we have with them and training peaks, emails, text messages, and the like to drive the discussion today. We also utilize our Facebook group, which we will do on Thursday. Uh, you can search that, Crushing Iron Group. Answer one simple question. We'll let you write in. Awesome people, fantastic community, solid resource, and a uh, way overcomplicated um sport and is a great place to get actionable information from seasoned veterans willing to lend a helping hand and help you avoid some of the uh obstacles and pitfalls we've all had along our own journey and we'll go on there like we will thursday and do a little bit q a take the pulse of the community take questions from our outstanding and amazing listeners and do our best to answer those as quickly and as thoroughly as we possibly can but that is it we don't do sponsors we don't do ads but we do have an agenda and that's to keep you happy and healthy in your endurance sports journey. Very nicely done. Um, I think it's about time I bring up my heat theory again. Uh-oh, go for it. Because, I mean, I know it's hot. And I, I always think of it as like you've got a, um, you know, uh, nature-made pain cave right out the door. So go get it. I like the heat. And, but I think what happens is we've become so accustomed to air conditioning that it feels hotter than it actually is. If you're not used to being out there. I mean, I live on a beach right now, so I'm on the beach and I was out tilling the weeds the other day. Of course, it's not as hot down up here as it is there, but still, it's all relative, right? Or no? I think we just get used to being a little bit soft. I mean, that's true, but I mean, 115 is not soft. That's yeah, just I mean, like ridiculous. It's, just, it's great to sweat out the toxins, man. <laughs> sweat out the sweat out the toxins. That's what I. It's just I mean, that, I'd, I'd be in the, in the sauna if I could, but it's still not. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, you're out there tilling weeds. The yeah. hell is tilling weeds? Well, sometimes the beach maintenance uh, when you get going on these things, <laughs> you just you just till them a little bit. Yeah, I've got. You should say I wear the uh, you know calf high black socks and white shoes. Um, I got the I got kind of got the old man beach look going on. <laughs> And you know what? I bet you rock it well. Um, hey, a neighbor. Yes, t- uh, today, obviously, we got a lot of races coming up, and that means a lot of freaking out happening. Um, the next big one, obviously, you got 70.3 Worlds this weekend, and uh, that's going to go on in Finland. I'll probably talk a little bit a little bit about that on uh, Thursday. We'll say before we even go, before we dive deep 
in the topic of today that I was, uh, you know, you know me, I'm always watching all the races that come on. So I will watch the Paris test event, the ITU stuff on, it was like Thursday, Friday and Sunday. They had the women, they had the men and they had the mixed relay on Sunday. And you got Christian Blumenfeld. I think he was like eighth or ninth flies from Paris to Singapore and then wins the PTO open, um, which is just insane to me, the travel. I'll argue, and even though the, the people at PTO will say, oh, it was one of the most stuck fields of all time. It wasn't. It was rel- relatively, honestly, a pretty weak field. But he still won. It's still insane that he can do that and just a ridiculous athlete above all else. But I, w- I do want to weed this in because it's something I am passionate about. And I brought up before that for the age groupers who raced that race, they had to provide proof of swim time. Oh, proof of completion of a specific distance before they could compete. I love that. I love it. I don't think it's, it's just, it's not just about the safety piece. It is about the preparation It is about accountability, which I think we need a lot more of, uh, when it comes to, especially this one portion, I know I go off on lots of tangents and I get on fire about a lot of things going on with swimming, lack of preparation, Lack of you know focus going into races, um, but I I love that I don't I don't know that Ironman will ever do that. Um, I wish they would. In a lot of scenarios, it would make for an overall much better experience for all athletes. Um, but I do I do I think it's a great idea, and I think it's for anything honestly 1.2 or over. I think it's necessary, especially given the body wire. So I thought that was neat. Um, and, and definitely something that hopefully we see more of. I'm sure a lot of people don't want to see that. Um, but I'm one of those people that do. And, but when I, and going back to the swim, this is kind of the launching point of the, the conversation where I had to ask in our weekly email on Monday. And again, with the lack of, you know, kind of racing or not racing, but you know, the, it's not as much, not as heavy, not as frequent. It's too I hot. Kind of said, you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I said, it's, it's said it's, uh, you know, this is that 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 period of time where you kind of got, you know, idle hands, right? Or in idle minds is kind of like a danger zone, especially for triathletes to start tinkering with things. I'm going to raise my seat post. I'm going to try and do, try and do, you know, uh, fluid strategy. I'm going to get a new race wheel. I'm going to buy a new helmet. I'm going to, I'm going to transition from a sleeveless to a, a wetsuit. I'm going to buy some new cycling shoes. Maybe I need some new inserts. How's that new carbon shoe? What's the weather going to be like? What are they predicting? Where's, you know, I wonder where I'm going to be in the transition rack. What should I do? I think I'm taking much sodium. What's the weather going to be like? How windy is it going to be? Look at my times from last year. I think I'm my place in the top 20, but if I look at the confusion more. I might even be top 10. Am I going to be on the podium? If it looks like a podium, what do we need to do? Look at those people. They just did like a hell brick where they went out and swam the whole course and biked the whole course and ran for two hours. Should I do that? Am I behind? Or are they doing something really, really stupid? It's the latter. <laughs> so what am I doing? And where am I? Like, should I be doing more? And all you do is panic. Um, you use all this energy, this wasted energy that two weeks ago you were just checking boxes. So if you're in that zone, check boxes. Just keep checking boxes. Get out of that zone. Do what you need to do, and please, dear God, don't do these gigantic, huge brick weekends where you're just going to be shelled. Um, having said that, I had this kind of uh, went kind of a back and forth with an athlete that, in and going back to swimming, a lot of athletes, their heart rate gets up before they even get in the water. It's like the anticipation, right? The anxiety, the what could be, the what might happen of what happens once you get in the swim or regardless of distance, just kind of like throws gasoline of the, on the fire of like panic and anxiety in your heart rate sky highs before you even get in the water for the swim. And while yes, there are plenty of people that go into these races with, you know, a real true kind of uneasiness of being in the water. I do, I do believe. And in my experience, having talked to, you know, athletes in the past, a lot of their feeling is from the people from that many people being in the water at the same time, what might happen? I'm going to get swam over. Somebody's going to kick me in the face. Someone's, you know, not holding my line. And we have, a, we have, you know, obviously everyone is different kind of personality and different life experiences, but this got me kind of on the, on the pot, the, um, the topic of excellence and winning and losing and everyone being a competitor or everyone being your competition. And, and what I told the specific athlete was that, you know, I think you tend to look at everyone as an adversary or as an opponent or they're out to get you. Everything is a competition, right? And I think a lot of people go through life like that, right? You know, you get in the pool and I just share this lane. He was just bumping into me. 
all over the place. Well, I mean, with the nerve of this guy. And the reality probably is, is he like maybe brushed your shoulder once and then it kind of sent you flying. And then you hop on the bike and, and, and every driver that's, you know, six feet away and not seven feet away is out to get you. Um, you know, and every person, you know, every, on the run route saying, I had to do take a detour today or somebody, you know, ran up behind me and didn't say on your left. You know, you're always thinking everyone's out to get you. I'm a competitive person. Everything's a competition. And there was even a study that's done like, you know, when someone comes up next to you running or passes you, the average speed that's picked up is eight seconds per mile. We are, we are natural competitors, right? And I think everyone can re, it can, can relate. You're out on a bike ride. You see somebody off in the distance. What do you do? You pedal harder. You want to catch them, right? Somebody passes you. What do you want to do? Hop on their wheel. You're in the swimming pool. You're doing your laps. You're doing your know, zone two stuff. Somebody hops in ahead of you, and they're like two to three seconds faster than you. What do you do? You swim fast enough to keep up. Like we do, we don't want to be seen as weak. We don't want to be seen as losing. It is it is woven into a lot of our the fabric of just I mean, you, you, that primal feel, right? And when you go into a race thinking everyone is trying to beat you and there was only one win and the rest of us are losers, while well, that is true, right? In terms of, of of sporting and if you're especially if you're a professional, but as age groupers, as in just people who got into sport for, for a specific reason, we are trying to win our own day. You were in the sea of three thousand people, two thousand people, whatever it is. Everyone has a different goal. Hell, there's probably three goals per athlete. You're looking at six thousand different goals, right? Plan, you know, goal A, goal B, goal C, you know, finish, you know, PR, do this. All the everyone's a different goal. And going into a race instead of lining up on race morning, right? Where you you come in, the the, the music is bumping, you're getting pumped. You know, there's all they're, they're they're most definitely playing. Let's get that party started. That is like the one, the number one played. Um, you know, a hype song before you start races, especially for an Ironman. So bumping that, everybody's in their wetsuits, you know, you're ready to get in the water and you look around and the ones that are smiling and, and joking and looking around, you can tell that they're grateful is that I think they also have this recognition of that, you know, it's kind of cool that we're all here doing the same thing. Not we're all here competing against each other and yes there are where there are going to be athletes that want to compete right they want to beat somebody that want to beat you know want to place high in their age group or win the whole race right but for 99 percent of the people out there the main focus you should have is how can i be excellent today just for me well just for me and me being excellent and me putting forth my best effort that means i win but what it also doesn't mean is you lose and I think that approach, right, when you think of you winning and everyone else losing or you losing means everyone else wins, it creates this kind of adversarial competitive nature that's actually a negative, right? Yes, you know, competition is healthy. I'm all about competition. I'm the anti-participation ribbon guy. But when it comes to individual sports with triathlon is, it is all about you and how you did your best. You know, example – you go into a race and you haven't put forth a lot of training. You didn't do very well. You you executed, honestly, a really poor race, but nobody showed up and you happened to win your age group. Oh, I won, baby. Yes, I crushed it today. You did it. Did you? Did you? And then conversely, same athlete really prepares hard for a race executes flawlessly and really feels like they got every ounce out of themselves on race day and they get sixth. Which yeah. one is, which one is excellent? Which one is getting the most out of themselves? Which one makes you feel like you put forth your best effort? The latter, even though they didn't win. Right. And so when we go into these races and we start to look at, you know, people start combing through, you know, the athlete guy. Well, they they don't. They uh, people. I would say athlete guy, but people don't scroll through the athlete guide. They ask on the Facebook page when it's all readily available on the athlete guide. They scroll the participant list or pass. You know, uh, Iron Track. You know, results and they're they hopping out track out. It's all about winning. And but for you and especially in long course racing, the win to win is to, is to beat the or excuse me is not to beat is to become and be the best version of yourself on that day while also respecting i think and acknowledging everyone else out there is trying to do the same thing and i think if you go into a race with that spirit with that mindset 
you will have a better day and you will have a better experience because you also understand that everything that happens isn't to make you lose and it isn't because of someone else. It's just it's just a day in the life. Shit happens. And so you got to roll with the punches and get the best out of yourself that you possibly can and understand and realize that today is about me, about my effort, about my execution. And after that, let the chips fall where they may. You know, I'm all about energy and, you know, people energy and things like that. And you talk about how competitive we can be when we see somebody pass us on the bike or on the run or whatever the case may be. And as you know, I, I term that like sort of race energy and I sort of depend on it. And that's why I, I kind of probably tend to undertrain a little bit because I, I, I look forward to using that energy on race day and think it's real. Um, and, but the, the, the challenge is to harness that, right? So if you come down to race start or swim start in the morning and the race and you're, uh, you're anxious and you're super hyped and you can't, you know, you, you're ready to go, but you're kind of, you know, flailing around and kind of not calm. I think you're losing that energy. And I think that for me, it's all about sort of channeling it. You know, I, I usually come to a race morning either kind of dreading it <laughs> half asleep or kind of looking I try to look forward to it as a, a day of exercise something I'm really you know looking forward to doing and for me that just calms the nerves and I because I think what you're saying is so accurate because you can you can either um you know we talk about you know our camps and sometimes you know how people just do things that they never thought they could do and I believe that's you know sharing people energy and if you go into a race, you know, using like a, maybe a magnet or something as a analogy, uh, you can either attract that energy or you can repel it. And if you're going in at, you know, thinking you need to beat everybody and show everybody up, you know, you're repelling that energy. And I don't think you're using the energy of the race in a proper way. And a lot of times for me, that just comes down to staying calm and breathing and just, you know, when somebody comes up alongside you, you know, like you said, be grateful that we're all doing the same thing. You know, we're using this energy together. It's something that we've all, you know, wanted to do and, and we're going to use each other kind of. And I think using each other in all forms is better. I mean, I could be, you know, I'm sure you've had, we've all had days where we've been sitting around kind of lethargic and, you know, maybe a friend comes over and it just automatically perks us up. Where does that come from? It's just sort of that being in the same circle and sharing that, uh, group energy that really works, but you have to harness it. You can't be out of control with it. You know, it's, it's gotta be, you know, it's almost like waking up and expecting the day to be shit all day. And then you're looking for things like that. See, there it is. There's another crap day. There's another thing. There's another thing. But if you're looking at a race as something that we're all in together and, um, we're, you know, for lack of a better word, pulling each other along, you know, you talk about like a Peloton or, you know, when, you, when you're out riding with somebody and they're pulling you. I mean, not that I'm encouraging drafting, but, you know, you can sneak in there a little bit and kind of share some airspace, <laughs> you know. But I, I just think that, you know, it's so much more enjoyable when you're out there with kind of a common goal, you know. And it's, it's sort of like, I guess a Peloton is a really good way to think about it because they sit there and work with each other all day. And then, you know, at the end, the last, you know, half hour or whatever, they start popping goos and like cranking things up, you know, their body is nice and warm and their abilities are going to be where they're at, but they, they go for that high energy finish, you know? And, you know, once you, I think that's a really good way to look at the day is you kind of, kind of go along with people and use them and not use them, but like be with them and uh, take that energy and and kind of get through to towards the end. And then you can kind of go off on your own and be that competitor. But it's so rare in Ironman to even have that ability to get that far because the minute you hit the water, you're trying to beat somebody to the first buoy. And it's like, geez, you know, you've got 12 or 14 or 16 hours left. I mean, the race is not won with that first face plunge. You know, you bring up an, an excellent point in that I've in the hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of athletes we've had do 70.3s or fulls, I've never heard an athlete say, you know, I got on the bike with this, with this guy or girl, and we seem to be about the same pace. And we just kind of like bunny hopped and rode the whole, you know, kind of rode the whole thing together. And it, it, it was really a terrible experience. And it made the time go by so slow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No one's ever said that. 
Maybe it made time go by faster, right? Because you're with someone and you have a common goal. Like we all have the common goal to get the best out of ourselves. Same thing on the run. You know, I, was, I found myself in a really, really dark place at like mile 20, 21. And the sun was gone. It was dark outside and it was lonely. And I found somebody that would have to be just kind of the same speed. And you hear these stories, right? Of, well, come on, let's go. Let's, let's run a little bit. We got this. We're not, we're not walking. Let's run a little bit. All right, let's walk. We can do this. No one ever says, and it was really annoying because I would have much rather been out there with my own thoughts in total misery and isolation and depressed about my race than this person positively egging me along and making me run and doing it together. I would much rather be just a lonely, you know, miserable person being around mile 24. No one's ever said that, right? Because it's, you know, the, the, the phrase we use a lot and you've all seen, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And I love the analogy made about the Peloton and that, you know, we do line up for these, for these races. And I do think in, a, in one of the very first, maybe the first guest we ever had on Steve Magnus, he said that, you know, and we use the phrase, the attitude of gratitude and that we're, that we're, we feel very fortunate to be able to be on the start line to do something, even attempt something that we're about to do. Mm. And that attitude alone allows you to get the best out of yourself, right? Just like, thanking people along the race day or saying positive things allows you and, and gives you kind of a dopamine hit that makes you perform better. Thanking a volunteer at every every corner, thanking a you know EMS or or police officer for holding an intersection. Hey, thanks man, appreciate being here today. That doesn't make you feel bad. Doesn't. No. It, it that small interaction of positivity fuels you. Just like getting a high five from from a stranger on the run course, just like seeing people on the hill cheering out and clown, you know, uh, you might be a person who's like, you know, I think you have like a clown phobia, right? Aren't oh, you like an time. anti-clown guy? Not anti, but I'm just, uh, yeah, you know, they're, they're not your style. It weirds me and, out. I mean, it's not mine either, but like you see stuff like that on race day and a total stranger just yelling something and you get energy from it. And then you have someone who's like, Ugh. there was this person out on, at mile 34 that just got a little bit too close to me and, and I got made super nervous and I thought I was going to fall over. Like that's just a, like that is a microcosm of your whole attitude of the whole race. And I guarantee that person to have a good day. Right. It's a mindset. Yeah. The positive energy, the, you know, the, the looking when you get in the water is someone not listen from, especially in the water, right? Especially in the water. Not everyone is not out to get you. They're not trying to swim on top of you on purpose. They're not trying to swim in you. They're not trying to kick in the face. You know, you know what most of them are trying to do? Fucking survive. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's you think when the Titanic went down, people were like, oh my gosh, this person like totally got in my way trying to get to this life raft. And like, you know, that's more life or death. But well, that you, yeah, pe- people are just trying to make it. That's it. Mm-hmm. Like, as they hate you or like you, it's because they want you to have a bad day and they want to win. And you want, that's just, you, <laughs> You can't have that thought. You have to go in with a smile on your face. You have to be excited. And then what you also see is athletes that go into races very unsure of their training. And they have this very specific goal that they going into a race. If you feel like everything has to go right, then you are going to be that irritable person. Ah, uh, so, so true. Oh man, the race didn't start till like 15 minutes later and so i was behind, already behind one goo and i knew that i was going to go already have a bad day so i was basically bonking before i went in the water or i got shoved around this food and i got dunked under water for a second and it really threw me off my rhythm or i dropped my bottle and then I, I missed an aid station because this stupid volunteer wouldn't let go i'm like you you are responsible for your bad day it's an attitude like going back to the the joke we always make about you spill your morning cup of coffee and you're like there it goes today well, this today's going to be great. You know, mm-hmm. that's, that's a choice. So if you go into these races and you're so worried about your training that, or that you might not finish, or you're so worried about being perfect in your training and a perfect performance because you really want this, this race to play out so perfectly to get your perfect time, you are going to be anal retentive all day. You're frankly probably just generally miserable to be around the two days leading up to it. Like you're, you ha- and if you find yourself having that mentality – to have a friend or a coach or a teammate to slap you upside the head and slap you back into reality and remind yourself that this is supposed to be fun. Because on the flip side, you'll have somebody go into this race with a ton of fitness and a ton of, you know, uh, you know, training in. And while they might have a goal, they're out there to have fun and just see what happens. And the person that's under trainer doesn't know, you know what their their mindset is? You know what? 
Who knows what can happen? I got nothing to lose. Let's roll, baby. That person has a much better shot of having a good day and honestly probably beating the person who was so worried about it all, even if they have twice the fitness and have done twice the training because they're going to seize up and be irritable and find things that are wrong with everything. And we all, we listen, we all have friends like that. So we all have athletes that we know they're like that, right? They always go on social media. All they do is complain, right? They complain about some 87 year old dude. Who's got a bag groceries, which is sad enough as it is that they're taking too long. That's the person. And we all know people like that. So when you, when you approach life with this negative attitude and you look at everything as a, as a, an inconvenience or as an opportunity to be irritable, <laughs> you are not only probably just brought out miserable to be around, but from a performance standpoint, you're going to look for every excuse to have a bad day instead of to have a great day and to overcome everything. And, and honestly, that's about what being excellent is about is overcoming what the day gave you. Not the perfect day, right? Having great fitness, but going in and just having it immensely, just kind of, you know, laying an egg or going into it with some pretty good fitness and getting every ounce. I'd like, I'll use Sam Long as an example. He raised the PTO US Open on, I think it was like, what was it, Friday? I think it was, or Friday, Saturday. And had a, I think they had, he and his partner had their baby on Tuesday or Wednesday, first baby. And they flew in like the night before. And he was like, I think one of his post race, they're like, is this the best race of my life? He's like, probably one of them. Cause I think I got 110 or 120% out of myself today. Basically out of like the 80 to 90% trained he was, he got the most out of it. Mm-hmm. Maybe he was going to into a race because he just, he just went out there and just let it fly and got apps every ounce out of yourself. And again, it kind of goes back to what we said last week about, you know, instead of being the worst of someone, you're not being the best of who you are and what you have. And that goes to the mentality on race day, not getting swept up in, in everyone else's plan, everyone else's design, everyone else's training, everyone else's last workout. Is it a one week taper? Is it a three week taper? Is it pasta the night before? Or is it pasta two nights before? Should I wear a race helmet? Should I not? Should I wear race rules? Or should I shouldn't? What should my PSI be? When are you checking in? When you know, should I put a, a plastic bag over my seat? You know, even though my wet ass is gonna be on it as soon as I ride, so it's gonna be the purpose. What should I do? It's like we all find these things to to panic about in the the calmest the listen, I'm just gonna be honest. From the ten plus years I've coached full time, the athletes that get the most of themselves are the, are the calmest. They don't panic. They just they they just they don't panic. They don't flinch at everything, they don't freak out. And everything, they're just calm. They, it, in my opinion, it's almost better to be naive and chill than it is to be type A and obsessive. Because it's kind of like it's kind of like the, you know, this the the 15 seed playing the two seed in the NCAA tournament. It's like they're just happy to be there. Mm-hmm. They got nothing to lose, and you know what else? That makes them really freaking dangerous. Yeah, you know, and you know the, what else? It's one day in those tournaments. Exactly. That's a great example. Yeah, it's like they're the freshman, the sophomore guard, and they're always like, he doesn't even understand the moment that he's in because no. he hasn't been there before. Then that's that's where you freak out because they're playing free. They're playing wild, and they're having fun. Mm-hmm. Then you look at the guy who's you know on the uh, who's you know this his senior year, and he knows this is his last game ever. More than more than more oftentimes not, they freeze the hell up. Because all they're thinking about is it's about to be over. Everything I do is being is is going to be my last. How am I going to be remembered? And you got this freshman who's you know in his like you know what thirtieth collegiate game ever, and just out there doing his thing. You don't want to play that guy, and that's that's how you look when you go racing, right? It's like the the person doesn't kind of know any better, or who has this right this level of care. But it's not the same level of care that you're thinking, right? It's like they care about doing well, but they don't care about how they get it done or how it looks. And they might know their training wasn't perfect, but all they know is to be tough and get out there and find a way to get it done. Like, and that's that's where you see, you know, people go from being able to be because we all we all know these, right? And there's probably plenty of people. I would say probably half the people who listen to this podcast. You're great in training. You nail it. You always show up. You never miss. You put out performances. But on race day, you can never quite seem to get out of yourself what you get out of yourself in training. And to me, that is a chin up 
problem, not a chin down problem. Hundred. Way too many expectations on yourself, freaking out about this, worrying about other people. You know, everything has to go perfectly, and you go in, into a race with like hypertension, versus you know the person who does pretty well in training, and they go in the race saying, "You know what? I'm gonna have fun today. I'm gonna get after it, and I'm going to absolutely dig myself a hole." And they're smiling when they say it, right? Versus the other person who's kind of like, I wonder when it's going to hurt, right? I wonder when it's this, like that. You, you, you got to go into these races, like dialed in, stop asking these panicky questions, stop trying to be panicky, get mentally right, right? Get mentally right and prepare and say the things that need to be said, right? And there's like, we went to the Zoom call thing last year. We talked about Ironman racing and what it feels like. And you and I both just said, like, listen, the from either from depending on your shape, either past that 10 mile mark or past three mark, it's going to hurt like hell. It's going to absolutely suck. Totally suck. But keep running. Mm -hmm. Get yourself mentally right for to be tough, not to freak out. And that is obviously freaking out as like triathletes, like superpower. Let me see how many things I can freak out about, about race day. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that thing you said about, being naive i think there's so much power in that and i think what we have to understand is if you're not naive you have to figure out how to circumvent that in a way i remember um when i went to the my i went to the see the badgers playing the first final four and all my buddies were down there we're you know they're playing kentucky and dallas at the jerry dome and i was a nervous wreck man <laughs> you know just like as a fan and everything and i remember we were staying in the team hotel we got on the elevator and Bronson Koenig, who was a freshman at the time, the dude is 18 years old. The next night he's playing Kentucky in, or maybe it was that night actually in front of a hundred thousand people at the Jerry Dome, you know, like I get nervous shooting buckets at run camp, you know, let alone, <laughs> you know, like people are watching me and shit. And he's got a hundred thousand people, probably 30 million or 20 million watching on TV and everything. He gets out of the elevator and he's just looking a popsicle and he's like, Hey guys, how you doing? And like, no, not fear whatsoever. But when I think about, you know, I, I, I tell people a lot of times, um, and I think it's because I've done it so many times that when you're, when you have experience, when you know what's going on in a race, I think you just, the word race sometimes gets in your head, right? So you become somebody you're not because the gun goes off, you know, it's not like, uh, you know, and I normally talk about, long course like Ironman fulls because that's what I do a lot of times or mostly in these days. But um, I think it's super important to go out. I mean, frankly, for me, as slow as possible because you've got that energy hype, right? Like, and if you spike your adrenaline or any of that kind of stuff too early, it's just going to have, pro it's going to cause problems. You know, you're, you're, you're trying to do something that you haven't probably done, except unless you're the Madison Tri Group this weekend, but you, you're you going to go swim 2.4 and then go ride 112, probably harder than you have, you know, and then all of a sudden expect to run a marathon well. So my thing is always just take it easy, man, out of the start, because not only are you probably going as fast as you normally go because you're so hyped or, you know, it's just a race setting. And I think temp the tendency is just to, be going faster than <clears throat> than you think and it's harder to control it so do you have to really almost consciously slow down now i went <clears throat> down to ride this weekend one loop I, I shot a bunch of videos and uh i have the whole course or whole loop i guess on uh video now and i went through and i kind of narrated the sections and i'm going to put that in the group so people can check it out but um i went out and I, you know, I've talked about this before my first, uh, Wisconsin where I was having trouble with my big ring. So I, re I rode the whole course in my little ring, which I had a good ride. So I went out there this weekend because I was just shooting that video. I'm like, you know, I'm just going to chill in my small ring for a while and see how that feels. And I ended up having probably one of my better rides out there in a long time. And I really wasn't even trying, you know, I was, uh, you know, staying under control, certainly climbing and getting after the, the top of it a little bit and getting into the next, to the, you know, the same stuff we always talk about. But when I got, you know, I only rode one loop and I remember thinking when I pulled into the car and I was going to head back home, I was like, man, I feel pretty good right now, you know? Um, and I certainly was riding as good as I had ridden out there in a couple of years. Uh, so there's, I think there's just something to be said for 
not pressing all the time, especially on a course like that, because it'll just suck the life out of you. And, you know, you kind of go with your momentum and, and race free. Like, you know, you always talk about, you know, racing free means without tension on your brain constantly and, and which translates into your muscles and stuff like that. So I was just trying to ride easy and not easy, but with, a, you know, purpose, but not really grind it out too hard just to see how it feel. And I think that, I think that stuff translates, you know? Um, so, I mean, as I, as I go into this race and, and you talk about how people get, you know, a little bit hyped and start asking all questions and everything like that, I'm trying to ask less questions and just try to feel like I want to go out there. And if you've got the experience, I think one of your goals has to be to use that experience in such a way that you know it's a long day and mm -hmm. it's not going to be make or break on the stick out to Verona or the first couple hills. You know, you got a long way to go and the whole goal is to kind of come in and be ready to run. And even then, like you said, I mean, no matter what kind of shape you're in, it's all relative. I mean, one of my biggest nightmares, and you talk about competition, is when I see, you know, some of these PTO racers or even like sometimes in an Ironman or half or whatever, they have these competitive race to the finishes on a long course you know it's not it's not like a hundred yard dash right you've gone you've been going for hours and hours and all of a sudden you got to dig deep to beat somebody at the finish line I mean I guess that happens sometimes in amateurs but um boy that usually is not what we're trying to do and I think if if the longer you can put that feeling off the better in these uh fulls and halves and stuff like that because it's just like, also Magnus said, we talked about this, man, the, you know, that last half mile or whatever, when people walk, walk, walk the whole thing. And then all of a sudden they just run in. <laughs> it's like, what's going on there? You know, I, I think that uh, there's something in us that we have it. We just have to, you know, delay that, that sort of pain and that, what the hell am I doing or why am I doing this as long as possible? And then, you know, maybe then by the, because I always think about that when I'm running, I was like, how am I going to, you know, this feels kind of rough right now, but if I only had two miles left, what could I do with it? And if you can get to that point and actually, you know, that's why it's so mental, man. It's just so mental. And I couldn't agree with you more with that because it's chin up and, and that starts by not, you know, going outside of yourself too early. And I mean, I think that's like the, you know, one of the things that, again, we have this free time, right? It was we lead into races or we're either tapering. So we have more available time, which means more, you know, like mental, emotional brain space to kind of like teeter one way or the other. And most athletes, like they tend to teeter towards, you know, more questions, more problems, you know, instead of like, you know, because it was what mo I think what the way and not, we're not talking about being underprepared. We're talking about preparing in ways that, the, you know, putting your energy in ways that are more likely going to benefit you on race day. And that's, you know, being resilient, putting forth your best effort, and then looking back and, and understanding how successful or maybe unsuccessful you've been in training and what to really expect. Right. And then visualizing. And I think this is, this is a things that, that most athletes really, really struggle with is they are, anticipate what will go wrong instead of visualizing success. How good is today going to be? How well am I going to do? If something bad happens, how am I going to overcome it? Most athletes don't do that visualization. They don't lie in bed the night before they go to sleep and spend 20 minutes visualizing their whole race from the time you get your foot in the water to the time you cross the finish line. How are you going to feel? What are you going to do? How are you going to react? What's going to happen? Good scenarios, bad scenarios, go through them all. And then guess what? They all end with success. They all end with your own personal victory. They all win with your excellence. Go through that because it'll build confidence. It'll build positive energy. But what most athletes do is obsess and be anxious and worry about all the things that could go wrong. And those, those are the same athletes that worry so much about getting a flat tire 
We'll spend hours upon hours upon hours worrying about it and zero minutes practicing change in a flat. Mm -hmm. Zero. Or doing it over and over and over again. Like, do things and be productive, right? You know, at least you got you got two different kinds of people that that worry and, and be anxious, right? They're worrying, they're anxious in it, and they allow themselves to be frozen, right? In time, on the couch, in their bed. Then you have other people who find, you know what, I gotta get out and do I wanna I gotta do something to kind of work through this anxiety. I gotta go for a run. I gotta go for a run. I gotta go get in the pool. I gotta go for a walk. I gotta journal, right? I need to call a friend. They're proactive. They work through it. And so when you you find yourself again, like finding things to worry about, finding things that honestly, and this is again like a, an, an attribute of most your athletes is let me see if I can find an answer to all these things who don't that don't need to be answered. <laughs> That's where the mental energy goes to, right? Not solidifying and remembering what needs to happen to have a good day. And who knows? So play through all the scenarios. Visualize. I encourage everybody, whether it's the night before, two days before, or multiple times, the whole week before. I know for me, the best races I've ever had have gotten the most out of me. I've visualized <clears throat> the night before. Because you're not, you're not going to sleep or shit anyway. <laughs> so... You go to bed the night before and you crawl in bed and you do whatever you want. You can meditate, you can take a few deep breaths, and then visualize from the time you wake up, talking to people, having fun, smiling with your friends, giving a hug to your family, your spouse, giving a high five and a hug to your kids, hearing the music, right? Feeling it, making the walk down, knowing you're going to do well. And you know that feeling of I'm going to do well versus the person who's walking with a, you know, like a, a ghost, the pale face looking green almost. Your day's done. Get to the start. Unpack your bags. You're not a recluse. You're talking to people. Hey, man, you ready to go today? Yeah, man, I'm ready to go. Ready to have fun? Yeah, let's do this, man. Your first time? No, I've done this a few times. Oh, yeah, this didn't talk. You have a good time. Roll down in the start. See the sun coming up. Over the water. You're not freaking out. You think, how fucking cool is this right now? Playing some good music. You got the you know the MC on, ready to go. People start getting in the water. It doesn't make you panic. It makes you excited. Yes. I can't believe I get to do this. I can't believe I'm about to do this. How great is this? I'm super thankful for this opportunity. You get in the water. You do your thing. You own your space. You feel good. Somebody hits you, bah, man, it's good on over a little bit, man. I'm trying to kill my line instead of freaking out. Yeah, roll you know? with it. Exactly. Buoy to buoy. Buoy to buoy. Cornering. You maybe even take a you know a real long breath. Thank a kayaker. You know, thanks for being out here today. And then take another breath and get, up, get moving. Have fun with it. Continue to see the sun coming up. You know, I see people cheering along the canal or along the helix or whatever. Feeling good. Having fun with it. Get out of the water. Holy shit, that's a lot of people, right? And look down at your watch. Ooh, baby, I had a good time. Yeah, Having a good day, to me. right? Go with my emotions. The same same thing, right? Same scenario as on the, on the swim, do it on the bike. Feeling good, passing people, getting past. And when I get past, hey, good ride, man. Good ride. Pass somebody, hey, keep up the good work. Thank a volunteer. Thank EMS. Thank a cop. You know, oh, shit, drop the bottle. Well, better turn around and get it. You know, not not freak out, not how am I going to ditch that? Better go get it. It's going to cost me two minutes, or it might cost me thirty when I when I run on nutrition, right? Do all the smart things. Same thing for the run. Let's chill it out. Start slow. Give some high fives. Relax. All the way to the finish line, and then go through it again. Something else happens. Something else happens. But they're all wins, right? Because you can control those thoughts. You can control that visualization. So on race day, it's not strange. You've honestly kind of done it already. You've done it in your head. You've felt it. You've visualized it, right? A lot of people stuck on the trainer or treadmill or whatever it is that you're doing. You picture yourself. You watch these finish line videos and these highlight videos. You get the chills. You might even cry. Watch some of those. Don't research things to panic <laughs> for the night before, right? Or, you know, how many, you know, has anyone ever had an allergic reaction to the orange top and the Gatorade bottle that they give out at mile 70 of the bike course? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you, it's funny, but it's true. Like, think about the positive. Think about how much fun it's going to be. Think about how grateful you are to do this, right? And think about fun with it. And I guarantee you, that happy and healthy version of yourself 
will also be the high performing side of yourself because you might be healthy, but if you're not happy, you're not going to get the most out of yourself. You're going to watch yourself degrade. Start high, real high, and roll with the punches. Um, don't get knocked out by a body shot. Yeah. You ever heard that, that saying, time flies when you're having fun? And I think that's so true. I mean, this is what you're talking about basically to me is meditation and motion. It's sort of like being in the moment and and enjoying all the stuff that's going on because if you're, you know, those days that seem like they drag forever are full of problems and all kinds of things like that. And, you know, you bitch about it forever, but like, you know, if you're just kind of in that moment, you know, that race is kind of over before you realize, it. you know, it's like a weirdest thing ever, you know, 12, 14 hours of, of, you know, suffering or whatever. But if you're kind of in a flow, it's sort of like, damn, I'm already on the second loop of the run. And it kind of happens like that, believe it or not. It just, I think it's all a big time mindset, you know, and like you're saying, you can watch videos and just see, like I was, I actually kind of caught a little bit of the, is it Mont Blanc the other night? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The finish line. And the guy was going, congratulations, you're an Iron Man. <laughs> it, was really, <laughs> it was really irritating. I mean, it's like, man, Riley forgot it, the most important part to train him. You're an Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> iron man <laughs> like, mike, what is, is mike Terry, you're an iron man <laughs> iron man <laughs> if he says that this year i'm gonna have no. to grab the mic for I, you. right the only person i ever know that's 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 been the announcer for any of my races was mike riley at wisconsin the year that hayden was just born that's the only reason i know it because he said he gave a shout out to hayden like on the side that's it see Mike, Mike Terrily, you are an iron a man. Like, who? <laughs> it's of course, he's like there's, trying to create with, his own with, thing, I think, and I'm not buying it. Well, listen, with the amount of fucking time you take going down the red carpet, yeah. he could probably give your whole life story. Yeah. What is that, a till day or whatever? He would stretch out that R a little bit. Oh, yes. Iron <laughs> man. R. Let's go ahead, and since we're doing weekend, we'll, we'll stop it here. Well, on the red carpet this year, are you... Are you racing through? Or are you doing? Are you doing like the politician shaking hands, kissing babies, making sure you give all the shout outs to everybody? Or which one are you doing? Doing the short Oscar speech, the thank you in the walk, or are you thanking everybody in the sun? <laughs> you know that always depends on uh, how the race is going. <laughs> like if it's if it's out of control, you know, I, I know we got a lot of people up there watching. We got what close to fifty people around that weekend racing, right? With yeah, the yeah, half and the full. And, uh, yeah, I'll be shaking hands <laughs> unless, let me ask you this. What if you turn of, the corner and you hit the red carpet and you got 13 seconds to go to beat your course PR, you oh, still I'm, shaking hands head down, <laughs> head down, buddy, head down. See you in the, see you in the refreshment tent. And I, the question is how will I even know? Because the way I operate a watch on race day is like absolutely for the, not for the faint of heart. It's a. Uh, Don't worry, I'll tell you, man. <laughs> Thirteen seconds. You, uh, yeah, like a Chattanooga that time. Just go. You better <laughs> go. From the bench. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sprinting downhill for no apparent reason. I had no idea because I. The problem was in that day, and a lot of days. <laughs> I would, you know, I think I'm going back to, I don't know. I keep going back and forth on this with the chrono. I think I've had my best races with my chrono. So I think I might have to go by feel, but like really by feel. But that mm -hmm. day it was kind of hot in Chattanooga and uh, I was wearing my contacts. I can't really see my watch because I have that, you know, I can't see up close with my contacts and, but it was also fogged up. So I had no idea <laughs> what my time was. And that's when you screamed at me, you better get going. <laughs> So I had no idea why I was going fast, Listen, but I don't really ever yell no, on race day. That's true. Like never. You kind of, I don't even think you looked at me. You said, you better get your ass in gear. Yeah. I just something, something, even something. keel. That's it. Keep it even. <laughs> never too high. Never too low. Just keep it even. Well, except that if first yelling, finish of mine, you were screaming a little bit that day. That, that was drunk hanging from a light post. <laughs> okay, so a little bit different. <laughs> you reflect on that one. Like, Oh man. Better, I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not hanging good. from a light pole, screaming I don't even know at if the that top light of your lungs. Still there. Probably not. They're taking everything you touch gets yeah, torn I, on. I, seriously, they taken taking my light post. They taken my bus stop. 
I'm thinking about bringing our C2610 and plopping it down right where my bus stop used to be. That's not a bad idea. I'm just like, you know what? You can take away my bus stop, but you're not taking away my space. Uh, open is the weather's going to be so superb, but I don't have to worry about hiding in a bus stop. I think I think I do. I I think I might have that. So you better remind me that. Time. <laughs> okay, all right. But all right. Uh, why don't right. I, I got an idea? Why don't you just kind of like squeeze it into the farmers market and just leave it there? <laughs> you know, maybe we can act. You know, as if we're yeah uh, um, developing some new uh, new organic hemp hemp cbd oil yeah <laughs> something yeah, like that for track yeah. athletes made of made of carbon and uh lactate yeah so we'll do yeah just pre-order booth you know we don't have any product yet but we'll sell uh we'll so or we'll sell organic lactate intolerant milk yeah that's not bad that'll, that'll get athletes no, we'll probably sell out first day and all we gotta do is roll over to the walgreens buy some two percent and tell people tell your athletes it's lactate intolerant and it'll reduce their lactate production rate will be fucking selling out in two seconds yeah we'll create some fancy bottles <laughs> that's right <laughs> it's all about marketing mm-hmm. that's it. we'll do uh it looks like our, our q a post and facebook's got some pretty good traction so we'll address that and those questions on thursday looking forward to seeing everybody in madison we'll be posting kind of a schedule of events for our athletes but also if you want our listener want to come see us come see us uh, the more the merrier we're all in this together. Uh, as always, we love you. We appreciate you. Uh, if you're interested in coaching or camps, you can go to our website, c26triathlon.com. It is our one-stop shop for all things coaching camps and community. If you have any questions directly from Mike, he is available, crushingiron at gmail.com. If you need anything from me, c26coach at gmail.com. All right, buddy. Go visualize, and I will catch up with you later. All right, dude. See you Thursday. See you, man.